I'll be teaching and talking to you about faith, but I'd like to drop a few thoughts here tonight so you'll know where we're going. Everything we do this week will be all in and around and through the name. The greatest one word in this Bible is Jesus. It's the most powerful name in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. The world don't really know how powerful it is. They see it as a very beautiful name, and it is beautiful. It fits most of the songs, poetry, and that's just about it. But there's so much inside of this name that the world will never see unless somebody has faith in it to reveal what's really in that name. Because inside of that name, there is a living, dynamic Word of God. It's alive. In that name, there dwells the glorified blood of Jesus Christ. In that name, there is the power of the Holy Ghost. And when this name is unveiled, by the least saints, devils run. Diseases go. Conviction falls. And men are changed. Simply because the name is revealed. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. When the devil sees the blood in that name, he's gone. When he sees the power of the word in that name, he's gone. When the devil came to Jesus, he said, If you're the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus could have told him about his virgin birth. He could have told him about the vision, the, the dove coming down upon him, and Lazarus coming forth from the dead, but he didn't. He didn't talk about experiences. He talked about the Word. And he said, it's written. Yes. Then he took him to the pinnacle of the temple, and he said, if you're the Son of God, cast yourself down, it's written. He began to quote scripture then. But once again, Jesus said, it's written, shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Then he took him to the high mountain. And once again, Jesus said, it's written. When the devil sees the living word of God, and it can only be made alive with faith, It's like any other book until faith takes a hold of it. But when faith takes a hold of it, it becomes a powerhouse. An infidel can read it and get nothing out of it because he don't believe it. But when you read it and believe it, you get results. Praise Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, tonight... I'd like to explain to you just a little bit, you know, so often we get lost in the crowd, and there's a lot of people on earth today, and it's easy to get lost in the crowd. Sometimes you get lost in the church, and uh, you just feel like you're sort of out of touch, you know, and out of step. Somebody else has got it and going. But, you know, Jesus said, I know how many hair." there is in your head. I know when a little sparrow falls to the ground. You may be lost in the crowd to some people, but not Jesus. Because there's no big eyes or little use. When he looks the crowd over, he knows every person by name. And I hope tonight I can encourage you just a little bit in this faith teaching it's easy for a person to say oh I can't 
I was thinking about one day the Lord saw a donkey and a prophet on him. And he decided that prophet needed to hear from heaven. Sometime, you know, we get too busy with uh, things down here. We need to hear from heaven. And the Lord said to that little donkey, he said, Hey, I, I, got, I want you to preach for me today. And I don't know, I, everything God's ever created can talk back to God. The donkey may have said, Now, Lord, I can't preach. I never preached in my life. And in fact, I can't even speak English. But the Lord said, little donkey, listen to me again. This is God talking. All right. makes a yep. That makes a difference, you know. Difference. Yes. Because when God talks, Hallelujah. donkeys talk. People talk. Yes. And you can do things when God talks through you. Hallelujah. And I pray this night you turn loose. Hallelujah. All this 40 years these preachers has crammed in you, you're so full and full and full. And if some of you are ready to explode, you're just packed full of foot, just like a tank of gas. Just pack it in there and it runs over. And if you never crank the car up, you'll never use the gas, you know. We just want to crank up here because I feel like I'm preaching to a bunch of people that's already full, that already has faith. Praise God. And maybe the devil scared you into not using it. Praise God. But if we can get you to use it, you're going to see your miracle this week. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I look out over this crowd and I see people that can write a track on your life experience that if you'd send it to all your relatives, they might all come to church. You've got a testimony. There's some of you folks here in, Men in uh, Bolger City that's got a testimony. I've known you a long time. But a lot of times we overlook what we've got and say what I've got maybe isn't very much. But you see, you'd like to see your people say, you say, well, that'd cost a few hundred dollars. Whatever. There's some of you could start at my life story. And you got dozens of relatives, relatives that would grab it and read it. There are some of you boys that was on the front lines. My experience on the front line. There's just so much in us. Pentecostals. We're so full of miracles that need to get out, that need to be released. Somebody will take them. Somebody would be interested. Somebody would grab it. You've been wondering how in the world I can get to some of my relatives. Write your life story. Or you have born all your brothers and sisters. They sure like to read that. And then get on down to where you got saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let me turn over here tonight to, I believe it's Romans. Praise the Lord. Praise you like the Lord. to stand? Romans 12 and 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And I'd like to read here in St. John, the seventh chapter, and start reading at the 37th verse. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, 
For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he has given to every man the measure of faith to open the gates of these rivers that they might flow. Our text tonight will be use your faith. Asking Brother Mike Daniels back there to pray the Lord's blessings upon this service. God bless you. You may be seated. Now the wonderful thing about opening up, and so many people think that's just preachers, but every member of this church that's filled with the Holy Ghost can become a living, flowing river and flow out two people wherever you go and it is amazing it has amazed me through the years of my ministry how there were times that i visited people who were sick and i would take a hold of a sinner's hand and just shake his hand and never he hadn't asked me to pray but i had a feeling the holy spirit wanted to do something and i just gripped his hand and say we'll be praying for you and from that second the man was healed because there's something inside of us that can be triggered and flow out unto people I have met people on the street and shook hands with them and the Spirit of the Lord would move upon them and many would say what is this that I feel it isn't any special something that uh, it's just the Holy Ghost. If you learn how to release the Holy Ghost that's in you, the least little saint can walk into a sick room and believe God and open up and the room will just fill up with the glory and the power of God. It's happened so many times in my own life and the Lord said this is not just for preachers this is for all of my Holy Ghost filled children if they will just release this power through faith they will see a change in their home wherever they're at whatever they want to change they can change it if they so desire I wrote down just a few things about faith that I just want to drop these thoughts before I preach God has an angel to push back the gates when I have the faith to march forward. God always has the angel there. Peter was asleep. He went to sleep. And they were going to behead him the next morning. But you see, there was something about this man. He remembered Jesus saying, when you're old, Peter, and he wasn't old yet. And he knew that whatever the Lord said had to be just that way. So he went to sleep. That's why he went to sleep. He didn't believe he was going to be beheaded. Because the Lord said, someday you're going to be old, Peter, and they're going to lead you around. Lord. He hadn't reached that yet. He goes to sleep. He remembers the words of the Lord. And the angel came. And that was the iron gate. Peter couldn't open the iron gate. But God had an angel there to open the gate for him. If you are marked, the Lord will take care of the gates. He'll take care of the problems. If you are only marked. God always furnishes the power when we furnish the action prompted by faith. You've got to act. You've got to believe. There are God powers that man has never tapped flowing all around us now. We don't have to play miracle power down. It surrounds us right now. For Paul said, for we live and we move and we have our being in it. This power is in us and around us. But many times it does not bless us because you've got to believe to release this power or, or make this power work in your life. 
So this power is here. It's gentle, it's wonderful, it's sweet. All around us, right now. You see, it doesn't have to come down. The great big God that made all the universe surely fixed the church that he could bless any time he wanted to. If he can make the sun shine every day. And I was reading the paper not long ago, they found an object out in space. So far in outer space, they said it takes 12 million, billion light years for the light to get here. Well, that thing may have gone out six billion years ago, and the light's just not getting here. God's a great big God. And that great big God, he built a church. The church is the crowning work of all he's ever done. The apple of his eye, his bride. Amen. Don't worry, my friend. He didn't leave anything out. Everything we need is instantly, always, at our fingertips. Because if he put the air here for us to breathe every day, and it's never failed yet, and the sun to shine, and it's always shine, everything perfect, you see. 300 trillion galaxies out there, they tell us. 300 trillion Milky Ways. And each one has approximately 300 trillion stars in it. And all of it just dropping through space, moving all along. But his crowning work is the church. Amen. The lights out there are shining. The Milky Ways are, are, are shining. And the sun shines. The wind's blowing. And the sea stays in its banks. God's got a church. And he loves it. Amen. Amen. There's no angel that can be as sensitive to God as a human being. We are made in the image of God. Man is fearfully and wonderfully made. He fixed us so we can touch him, talk to him. And the only way God, the eternal spirit, can reach this world is through us. He wants to flow through us. He wants to flow through us. Cornelius needed the Holy Ghost. Why didn't God come down there? No, he sent a preacher over there. Amen. Amen. How beautiful. All right, the strange thing about faith is it's now operating. Not a way off in the future, but now. You know, if we can ever learn to grasp the now, the now second. We don't have enough faith to go 4,000 years back and 2,000 years ahead of us. We don't have, only God can have that kind of faith. But we can have that now faith. Instant, right now, grasping the now. The world's always looking in the past, always looking in the future. But what about now? What about tonight? Where's God now? Amen. He won't have more power tomorrow than he's got tonight. He didn't have any more 4,000 years ago than he's got tonight. The thing about us, we need to tap in. We need to believe now. This, this second, I believe he is. Everything he ever said he was. And he will break through. And the only name that can open the windows of the spirit world is Jesus. When you say Jesus, the spirit world opens up around about us. I read in the Science Digest not long ago, they have discovered the only thing, beside the mechanical instruments that they use to split an atom, the only thing that can move an atom is faith. Man has actually concentrated and released their faith and moved atoms. So this article said, this whole universe, is made of atoms, made of atoms, everything. We're floating through a sea of electrical power everywhere, all around us. We live and move in it all the time. And if we could only believe everything that's there, the power, the energy, the healing, everything is right here at our fingertips. If we could believe this split second. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I was preaching in California at a camp meeting uh, last year, year before last, and many great miracles had happened. And suddenly the Spirit was whispered to me, it's time for waters and tumors to disappear. And I, I said, everybody in this camp meeting that has a tumor, a water that's visible or you can feel it on your bodies, get ready. Because the Spirit is talking to me, they're fixing to go. And as we reach the moment, I said, get ready. Let's pinpoint it. Now, let's believe now. And when we say in Jesus' name, go, I want you to see it going. Not saying, but banishing. And they caught it. And some 30 or 35 stood. That growth that was visible or they could feel had disappeared instantly. Why? We pinpointed our faith. And I brought those to a pinpoint of now. This second, release your faith. And they did. And it wasn't just my faith. It was the faith of that whole camp meeting. Brother, they opened up and turned it loose. And it hit those tumors and they disappeared. A lady sitting right down at the front, she didn't make it. Hers got as big as your fist. And I looked out there and she's struggling. She was struggling. And I pointed her out. And I said, lady, come on now. These things are leaving and that should have gone. Are you believing now? This instant, do you believe now? Right now? She said, yes, I, I believe I do. I said, in the name of Jesus, reach for it and it'll be gone. When she put forth her hand, it disappeared before hundreds. You say, well, if this will happen for one, it'll happen for anyone, sure. That's right, it was, it was the Holy Spirit doing this work. That's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. If we can learn to open up the dam, the gates, wherever we're at, the Holy Ghost is unlimited. And it wants to flow out of you. Out of your mouth. And off the end of your fingers. It's tangible. It's real. How many felt the power of God? You really felt the power of God. That same power that you felt hit you in the top of the head and run down to the end of your toes is the same power that drives devils away and tumors away. Everything must go. That same power. But you see the difference. You're believing for a shout. And that's what you got. You got it. And that's great. Everybody likes to shout. If they like to. God, they like to feel. But you that can shout can channel this another way and it'll bring about another type of miracle. There's somebody else needs to shout that's never shouted. There's somebody else that needs to be saved. You see? Amen. Faith in oneself limits achievement to one's own ability, to what he is able to do by his own capabilities. But faith in God links him up with deity. Oh, that's something different. You know, you got faith in yourself. All right, we all need a little faith in ourselves. But when our faith is in the name and in the word, we're linked up with deity then. The gift of miracles is what God can do through a man. The gift of healing is what God can do through a man. But the gift of faith is what God can do. That's God doing it. We are all human, you know, and we can fumble the ball sometimes. But when that gift of faith is thrown into action, God goes to work. Angels go to work. Even for the least saint. The least saint. There's something about 
faith that attracts angels. Amen. So, oh, I wish I had it. The Bible said you did. How many has the Holy Ghost? It's absolutely impossible to have the Holy Ghost and not have faith. Amen. The greatest miracle that ever happened in your life happened when you received the Holy Ghost. You had faith to receive the greatest miracle that can happen to a human being that's greater than raising the dead. So you've already had the miracle of miracles happen in your life. And God has put the miracle of miracles inside of us and we have made a prisoner out of him. We have tied his hands. We can nail his hands to the cross when we doubt. Let's don't do it. When we're in tune with God's spirit forces, that's impossible with men looking to move. Now, use your God-given faith. Now, I'm glad the Lord didn't say you had to have a boxcar load to move a mountain. I'm glad that you can move mountains with just a little bit of faith. Just use it, that's all he's asked you to do. And if you use your faith, if there's anything like it, he'll have to make up for it. Remember that always tonight. Now, if you will believe, you'll grow. Money's no good if you don't spend it. You become a miser. You hoard it up. A lot of fellas who are rich live in a shack by the road. They drive an old beat-up automobile. And many of them die of malnutrition because they're not eating the right food. What good is money if you don't spend it for the things that you need? What good is it to be filled with all the fullness of God if we're going to hold it up and keep it there as though if we gave, we'd run into, you know. But it's impossible. Every time the Spirit flows out, it leaves you with more than you had to start with. Hallelujah. This is different from anything. Now, how in the world can I release this power? I've released it a few times in prayer, and I've released it a few times shouting. How in the world can I release this great power? Acts 1 8, after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power. Now, wouldn't it be a tragedy for a big light plant that could light up hundreds of cities whenever they finished it? They only screwed one little 40 watt bulb in the thing. And all that power that would light up hundreds of cities. The engine's going, but only one little bulb. One little light is all they burn in. My friend, that's the way it is with the Holy Ghost. We've got power to light up cities. We've got power flowing through us. If we could only realize that. The Holy Ghost wants to witness through us so many times and we won't let it. God help us to get over our inferiority complex. You know who you're talking about when you're talking about Jesus? The God of all the universe. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. They used to curse around me and I'd holler hallelujah. Praise God. I used to work out on these jobs and my uncle, he said, if you'll quit praising the Lord, I'll quit cussing. He said, it gets on my nerves. I said, your cussing gets on my nerves. And I got to praise the Lord to retaliate. I tell you, a lot of time we can shut him up if we'll just call on his name. Amen. Praise the Lord. How can I release it? First of all, you've got to be free from an inferiority complex. You've got to be free from guilt. You've got to be free from fear. 
Now, how can I do that? One day I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, why is it that when I come into your presence, sometimes all of a sudden I just fade out, or you fade out, and I don't get what I come after? He said, remember Peter when he walked on the water? He got his eyes on the winds and the waves, and he sank. He said, when you come into my presence, and you think about something you did a long time ago and done, already got forgiveness, and you begin to feel guilt, he said, you can't stay in my presence. I won't allow that. Because you have lost faith that instant in my blood. If your faith was in my blood, you wouldn't have any guilt or feelings. Because my blood cleanses from all sin. When you walk in, you keep your faith in my blood. And you'll stay there till you get what you want. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, hallelujah. Not too long ago, I had talked to a lady from down the country. Just attended center by. I need to talk to her. She was a good woman. I could not detect one thing in the world. It was a bunch of little old fanatical things she was worried about. Like drinking coffee and all that kind of stuff, you know. And she just worried herself to death because she quit and started again or and all that, you know. And it bothered me. She said, I have repented so much until I don't think I'll ever ask him again. And that bothered me. I was sitting on the platform in a youth camp and the Holy Spirit began to talk to me. And the Lord said to me, He said, it's not my children's faults and failures and even their sins that bother me the most. It's the fact that they won't bring them to me and let me forgive them and wash them with my blood. This bothers me when they won't bring them to me because I have learned that Jesus Christ is the world's fastest forgiver. You go to run your brother down, he may have got forgiveness five seconds after he did. And now you all are one of God's children. And walk in his log. And God said, he ain't never created. I don't see no sin in his life. It's all gone. Amen. Here you are walking around here. Have you followed him around? Have you been to the prayer room with him? Well, how do you know? Why, he hadn't much more said that until he repented. God help us. These little things can keep us feeling guilty, you know. But if we had faith in what he said, I'll forgive you if you ask me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, faith in his blood will remove guilt. It'll remove fear. It'll remove everything. Let's take a look at some of God's rivers. Some of the great rivers that's inside of you, I just read it to you, out of your innermost being will flow rivers, not just one, but rivers, rivers, a lot of them. He said, I want them to pour out. I don't want them to become stagnant. I don't want you to dam them up when you receive the Holy Ghost. I want these rivers to flow. There's a river of faith. When it flows, I talked to a preacher the other day, about three hours of anger, and I poured my faith into him through the Word of God. He called me back that night. He said, man, he said, well, I was preaching great miracles happened in the audience. The people run to the platform, healed, didn't even have a healing service. He said, what'd you do to me? I said, I was believing God that God would give you a new touch of faith that you could release when you preach. Fear will make your sermon fall over the front pew. But faith will flow through you. All 
tore the place from wall to wall. And it's released and everybody's picked up. Everybody is lifted. And you can do that too. Amen. God's rivers, faith, hope, love. These are just some of them. Healing, peace, light. God's river power flowing through you this very hour tonight. Praise God. All right, what will it do for you? If you use your faith, you'll gather enthusiasm as you go. Oh, yeah. When you exercise in faith, you gather enthusiasm and people like you. You ever notice how people like people who are full of enthusiasm? And that fellow, you know, I know one fellow, oh, I hate to meet him on the street because it takes him 30 minutes to tell me all about his aches and pains and everything. He'll then wind up never asking you to pray for him. You run from that kind, you see. But if you use your faith, you'll gather enthusiasm. You'll live, praise God. You'll find something to be happy about. Then, if you will use your faith, you will be filled with expectancy. How you like that? Do you like to be around people who are filled with expectancy? Amen. We've been listening to the depression uh, for about two years now. And, and it never did make you feel good and you got through thinking about it. Of course, uh, I went through 1929. And I kidded them. I said, look, I've already been through the tribulation. <laughs> Couldn't buy or sell, could the Brother Mac? Didn't have no money to buy with. Amen. No money to buy or sell. And uh, we had three sixes sitting on the mantel board. That old chill kind of kid, remember that? You know, back in 1919. And Mom always said, boy, I said, the worse it tastes, the better, better it is for you. I said, this ought to raise the dead. But anyway, let's look ahead. Let's fill with expectancy. That poor old beggar lying at the beautiful gate. Here come two Pentecostal preachers. Broke. That could be like we usually are. Amen. And so that poor boy, he wouldn't, he wouldn't expect a little miracle of healing. He wouldn't expect him to get healed of those limbs that he'd never walked in his life. All he wanted was a few coins. But I want you to see something. He caught him in a spirit of expectancy. And he rode in on it. God is so anxious to heal people. He just grabbed anything just about it. That old boy shaking the cup there. Just taking the cup out. God would just be there. Hey, Peter, he's he's expecting something at least. He's not expecting healing, but he's expecting a little money. So let's heal him while he's expecting. If we could just get people expecting a revival. Glory. Expecting to move. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. That silver and gold have a none, but such as we have, what they have? They had the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We're going to give it to you. We're going to give it to you. They knew how to turn it loose. Praise God. And every one of us need to learn how to turn this power loose. We've got. All right, what else will it do for us? It'll make you courageous. Oh. It'll put something in your bones, brother. And I'll tell you something else. If you use your faith, it'll make you well able to tackle your problem. You ever try to tackle one of your problems when you're down and out and had the blues and just about ready to go under and ready to jump in the lake, you know? But, you know, you're down. You're thinking like Thomas. He said, well, he said, Lord, he said, uh, let's just go and die with him. Can you imagine that the Lord by his side, Thomas wanted to go down and die with Lazarus. And we'll just go over and die with him. Well, that's some faith, ain't it? That's the way some of us are. Well, let's all just die together, you know. You know, that's right. All right, you can 
get something going if you use your faith. You use your faith. Oh, but you say, I don't have much. The Lord didn't say anything about that. He said, just use what you got. Shamgar didn't have nothing but a stick. 600 Philistines. But he decided he's going to die and how just well as well. That's about the only time God can get some of us to really get with it. There's nothing else we can do but fight. We're in a corner. All right, I'll tell you something else. Faith will do it. lift your spirit. You don't have to have a tranquilizer. You can exercise faith and lift your spirit. That's right. Oh, I'm not condemning anybody for that. I just, uh, I just tell you a better way, you know. It lifts your spirit. And you can hang on to your dream. I hate to talk to people that give up. They don't have a dream left. And they don't have any hope left. And they don't seem to have any faith left. They give up. They totally give up. I said to a doctor the other day, we were talking, I said, you know what's wrong with this generation? He said, what? I said, they watch every program when they watch the ball games and they see the best. That's the best in the nation. They see the most beautiful girls and they hear the best worldly musicians. They don't put none of that other stuff on, that drag stuff. They pick, they get the best, you know, and put it on. And I said, they sit and look at themselves when they get to looking at all of that tip top and they look at themselves and they just wilt. Little me. That's right. He said, you're right. I said, that boy can't, he can't ever make it lying on his stomach watching somebody else climb a mountain, swim a river. He got to do it himself. He got to get out there and get with it. Amen. Get scraps for the few briars himself. Knock a few toenails off. This makes him tough. That don't make him tough. We in need of heroes. We in need of men that'll get with it. That's tough. And not just watching somebody else make it while we all go under. And it's easy to get that spirit in the church. Let them do it while you've got the same power the other fellows got. Amen. What about us doing it together? All together. Then I'll tell you something else. It'll make you young in spirit. You ever notice anybody that's full of faith? They seem to be young if they're 90 years old. That's right. They just feel young. Brother Von Adol, I don't know how old you are. You got me beat a little bit, but you don't look as, you're not near as old as, you don't look near as old as you are. That's right. I tell you why, there's some faith in the man. That's right. Praise God. Brother McDaniel's sitting over there. His hair is not all together gray yet. You see, there's some faith there that makes them young. Enjoy life, you know. This is the best thing on earth. You don't wake up with a headache. Praise God. Don't wake up one Monday morning having to drink tomato juice and eat raw eggs, you know. Praise God, hallelujah. We we around like the rest of them in the barnyard. Very noisy place. He had a dream. He had a dream. That's right, and I see a lot of folks. I'm afraid I'm talking to some tonight. A eagle in a cage. He's never happy. Put him in a castle, feed him the best of food. He ain't happy. There's something inside that's wanting to go. Something inside. And I'll never walk through a zoo what I'd give $25 sometimes just to open that cage and tell that old eagle, hit it, boy. I'd like to just see him take off running and go. Amen. Because it's in his heart. And one day that old eagle, he's growing up a little bit, you know. He's sitting out on the fence, the wind blowing, you know. And an old mother eagle came over and gave that long, lonesome scream. Before he knew it, he's in the air. He's gone. Until he looked like a little hummingbird. He found his place. His place was among the highest mountains. And among, uh, high, above the highest clouds. 
No fowl could fly as high as the eagle. He loves the height. There's something inside of you tonight. Some of you are prisoners you need to get out. The heights are calling you. You'll never be the same down there among the chickens of this world. Never, never, never. Every time a little thunderstorm comes up, the old chicken will run under the house. Slide. But watch that old eagle sitting in that tall tree. The storm comes closer and closer. And finally, she lifts her wings. And like a bullet, she goes over the thunderstorm. Amen. Amen. There's no storm that'll ever catch us. There ain't no storm that'll ever bring us down. You're born to fly. You're born to rise up above the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. I feel him. In bad habits to dis to to uh, discard. There's a few here. Psalmist David said, Psalm 34 and 4, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me out of all of my fears. All of my fears. Amen. That is a bad habit to sit around scared to death all day. I read one of the writers singing a new song. Some of us need to sing that new song. There's something about getting along with God. I went through some violence this past year. I fought the devil. I prayed more than ever prayed in my life. I spent many a night I never went to bed. I walked and I prayed and I talked to God. One night, we in the night, I was moving against hell. And the Spirit of the Lord was moving so mightily. And suddenly the Holy Ghost power surged through me. I was challenging Satan in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the glory of the Lord so shot through. And I have witnesses of this. The place lit up the fire of the Lord flashed in the corner. It flashed in the window. It flashed on the balcony. Why? Because there's fire and power in the name of Jesus Christ. When you rise up against Satan, don't forget the power of the name. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Nineteen years ago, I went through a dark valley of depression. And this is for somebody here tonight. And I'll never forget that. while I was sick. And this night vision, there came a worldwide flood. And I was in a high mountain range. I began to climb the highest mountain in all that range. And the water's right behind me, just calling. Black boiling. Finally, I was on top of the world's highest mountain. And the waters were coming on up to my knees. And I saw a tidal wave coming up, maybe a hundred feet high. And it seemed like the winds that were blowing across the earth were so ghostly. They were screaming, give up. You know this is the end. You know you'll never get away from this. The waters are rising. The tidal wave is coming. You're whipped. You're defeated. Give up. And I said, I guess that's right. I was in a fog. Then I heard a voice coming straight out of heaven. And the voice said, have you forgot the power of the name? And I come to now I lifted my hand and I rebuked that wave 
and it lay down at my feet like a kitten on a far place. And instantly the black waters rolled off. The sun came out. It was springtime. The trees were all in full bloom and leaf. The birds were singing. The glory of God was everywhere. Why? The power of the name. The power of the name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody. Touch him now, like. Somebody's faith is reaching out. Somebody's believing. Somebody is opening the gate for the Holy Ghost to flow through. Amen. Did you ever try opening that river of love on somebody that hates you? Just let it flow. Just let it flow. There's one thing that no human seal and ever be built thick enough to keep love from penetrating. It's the one power that nothing can stop. The love released on Calvary is flowing through the earth and thousands are falling under its power. He lifted me. He loved me. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He turned a river of love loose on this world. And it's been flowing ever since. Hallelujah. And he put that same river in you that you may release it on somebody until they come under the power and dominion of his spirit. Love lifted me out of the deep Maori clay. There's a river of hope. There's times when we can just hardly go, but always remember, take the landing of hope. There's hope. I don't care what you're up against, there's hope. Just keep on. I will come in for counsel sometime. I've watched them fall on the floor. Exhausted, given up. Can't make it. It's all over. It's all over. But then I talked to him about hope. Hope. And I watched the expression change. Hope. Oh, come on. You've got that faculty inside of you. Use it. Use it. If we're paupers, it's because we haven't used what God's given us. We've got everything we need. There's a river of joy that flows inside of every Holy Ghost filled person. Somebody said, Pray for me and I'll have joy. I said, I'm sorry. Can't do it. You've already got it. You got it shut up. Somebody said, Oh, if I only had peace. I said, If you got the Holy Ghost, they said, Yeah. There's no need for me to pray. I said, You just turn it loose. You've got it. You've got it. You just tell me just one thing you Pentecostals don't have. You just name it. Brother, when he wrapped this package up, it had everything in it. Everything. You got it. Everybody say it. I've got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he gave to every man the measure of faith. And what do we do with that faith? We open these rivers and let them flow. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Somebody said, Preacher said, I watched you in some healing service. 
and people get healed on the back of the pew. How do you do it? I said, I didn't. I just let the Holy Ghost through. The Holy Ghost went back there and did. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I'd have been afraid, I'd have damned it up. Amen. I've seen many a young evangelist preach some of the most marvelous sermons. But they had a fear that it would fall flat. And that's where that's what defeated us. The sermon was perfect. But when it comes time to release the spirit of conviction, fear cut it off. And it was dead. We do it. We do it. Don't look up in the face of God and accuse him. I hear people come and say, why don't, the, why don't God care? Why did you let this happen for? I said, he didn't. You let it happen. He does care. He don't want you sick. He don't want you down and out. He don't want you nervous. We had a missionary conference. Some of you perhaps were there this past year in Mendon. And uh, I came in and I was sick. I was so down and troubled about something I prayed about, sought God about. And I was lying there on the couch, and you know how we are sometimes, you know, we get to feel sorry for ourselves. And I said, Lord, I said, if you still love me, I said, have someone, to, there's already have a church out there. I said, have someone to come in here and just walk over to them and say, Brother Warren, the Lord loves you. Well, then walked one of the missionaries just about the time I got it out of my mouth. He said, Brother Warren, he said, this may sound silly to you. He said, I don't understand it, but before I left Bogalusa, the Lord told me that when I got here to be sure and tell you that he loves you. I said, I just got through asking him about it. And he knew I was going to need to ask that before I knew it myself. He knows ahead of time. Praise God. Hallelujah. He does care. He does love us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'd like for the musicians to come. We want to just believe the Lord here together. And we'll be preaching again tomorrow night and Thursday night, Lord willing. And we have just scratched the service. I want you to say I can't let go, I can let what I've got flow, but all the wisdom that you have over the years, sitting under the best pastors and the best preachers, and reading your Bible and studying Sunday school lessons and teaching them, you know, to send the boy to school. And I've seen this a few times, it's tragedy. And then the college. And then it turns out to be a ditch digger. You know, after he gets his education, it's time to use it, isn't it? Well, what's God educating us for? We've been to college. Some of you have graduated from college. Fifteen times already. You know what the heart? If you live open up and let that out with all the wisdom and the understanding you've got, you got a vocabulary that's been put into your spirit by the Holy Ghost and by preachers and evangelists. That when the Holy Spirit calls to you to just it's there. If that mule could do it. You can do it. See? One thing I like about that old you, he didn't preach nothing but what God told him to tell, told him to preach. See? He didn't put his own feeling in it, you know. Because he'd already beat him around over the head. He could have got 
Put a little thumb in Larry Self, you know. Uh, a little extra, but he just said what God told him to say, you know. Amen. Praise God, and that's the best, you know. If you just say it like he says, say it. It'll work. It'll work. You're a great crowd. I'm glad I can see your face here. It's there. One thing over the years, the Lord has let me know when I walk into a crowd of folks that have faith. Hey, you've got it. You can't help but have it. I saw a missionary panel one day, and that missionary says, I'll oh, ask you me questions. I said, what do you do when you get a fellow that don't have any faith? I said, give him some. They looked at me like I'd fell out of a tree. I said, yeah, give him some faith. Please come by here and hear him by the word of God. Back him up in the corner and preach it to him. When he gets through preaching, he's got some faith. If he believes what he said, and he'll lay hands on him, and he gets the Holy Ghost. Pour faith out. Praise God. Isn't that great that us preachers can put faith in people? Amen. Because we call to preach the word. Amen, amen. Some of you feeling yours right now. Oh, you got a lot of it too. You could have a revival in your family. That's right. You could have a revival in your family. You can see some of your loved ones Turn some of these rivers to lose all of them. Just keep pouring. You say, well, how do you do that? You know how to do it. You know how you get that in started it makes you shout don't you you know how you get that to start it makes you talk in tongues don't you speaking in tongues is one of the rivers interpretation is one of the rivers prophecy is one of the rivers here they are and brother Bonito, brother mike there's one thing i can't find in my bible where a man will ever get too old to bear fruit We can always be a green tree, can't we? I don't care how old we get, we're going to bear fruit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead, you believe in voice. Oh, you can just feel what I feel, that current of your faith that I feel. Your faith. It is amazing when saints believe. It's amazing. You're believing now. You're using your faith now. Amen. Now what name opens the storehouse? Jesus. Faith in the name, not in yourself. But faith in the name opens heaven's treasure house. What kind of treasure do you want? He's got them. Amen. Hallelujah. Shambo over he can lullaby. Oh, shambo over Kotaya. Would you stand and would you come down this way if you can, as far as you can, for a mass prayer of releasing our faith for this church, for revival, and for your loved ones, and for your friends. We open up tonight this great river. Amen. The great river. Amen. I feel his spirit lifting us now. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a place in him no vulture's eyes ever seen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Out of your animal's being, Jesus said this. 
Every word he's ever spoken has to come to pass. And he said, out of your innermost being will flow. Everybody say, flow. Rivers of living water. Let's fulfill that tonight. Let's fulfill that prophecy. Turn loose and let it flow tonight. Out of your innermost being. Flow. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.